Thanks for coming back for part two of the 1999 KX250 split fire build. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a little update about what we got going on in the build. First things first, we need to strip this frame of its current coating here. Um, you can see that it actually looks pretty great up top here, but underneath is where the real problem is. It's just not up to the scale we need this thing to be. Plus, for the Pro Circuit build, we're gonna be getting this thing powder coated the exact same color that the Pro Circuit team used. The reason why we need to send it out to California too is because of the carbon fiber pieces here that I got for this frame, thanks to my guy Matt in Australia. Um, these are a replica of the Berg carbon fiber pieces that the Pro Circuit team used. So with these carbon fiber pieces here, the thing with them, there are actually no brackets that go over the frame like a works connection skid plate would, for example. The factory team's actually used to weld gussets onto the frame right about right here, here, and in the back to get this skid plate mounted up. So you wouldn't have the hanger that comes up over the frame. And what happens with that is that, that rubs on the frame and it also messes with the rigidity of the frame as well. And then it's gonna be the same thing with this water pump guard as well. We need to get two gussets welded on the frame right here. So this thing can mount up just like that. Okay, so the bearing races are actually in really good shape on this bike, surprisingly. But before I go any further, um, and when I bring this to the powder coater to have it sandblasted off, I'm gonna get those races removed first. The easiest way, guys, to get that done, I have this park tool here, the RT tool, RT2 Park Tool, I'll link it in my description below, but has four prongs here, and basically what you do is just shove it up underneath here into the steering tube, pull it through so it kind of clicks in there, and then you can look inside and those four prongs will catch on that race. Let me just uh, look underneath here, and you can feel it too underneath. And then it's pretty simple here, you just got the hammer, and we're gonna nail this thing out. What was that, four hits? It honestly couldn't be any easier with this tool, I'm not even kidding. I've struggled so many times trying to get a long flathead screwdriver in there and you end up like chipping the flathead screwdriver or you end up somehow like messing up and damaging the race. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna be throwing new races in here but if you're just doing a build and your races are still good and you can reuse them, why not spend a couple bucks on this tool, I can't remember how much it is, and do it not only properly but headache free. From underneath here, here's just a better idea of what type of condition the frame was in. The top half, really not in bad condition, but as you see as I scroll down, the frame rails to underneath. This bike was ridden in a field on a farm, so there must have been a lot of like rough brush and little like trees that the bike was being ridden over. But we'll get it to the sandblaster and then off to Cali. And then while I'm gonna send that frame off to the Sandblaster 2, I'm gonna send the swing arm as well because the OEM paint that is on the swing arm, if you cowboy guys know, it is so hard, almost impossible to get off and it's such a headache. And it could really just use some cleaning up too. So I'm gonna send this off to the Sandblaster when I send the frame right now. But when I get it back, what I'm gonna do is actually throw the prime wheels on it and bring out the nice raw look and finish of the aluminum. So might see if I can try to clear it with something. Um, I guess We'll see when that time comes down the road. Luckily, no problem with the chain adjuster bolts because I've already had them out of this bike. This JIS screwdriver from Prime just coming in handy everywhere. When I first got the bike, I actually had to replace this uh, chain slider here because when I took the swing arm off the first time, the thing literally just crumbled in my hands. <laughs> Okay, only thing left on the swing arm here is the three bearings, one, two, and three. And if you work on your own dirt bike and don't have one of these bearing remover tools, then I would highly suggest trying to get one. It makes removing your bearings that much less of a headache and that much easier. Man, those were in there. 
Or with these bearings here, you just use the old school method. You find a socket that is the right size as the bearing race on the inside here, throw it in the vise, and then tighten it down, and it'll push that bearing right out of the swing arm. And if you hit the bearing with some heat as well from this propane torch, the bearing should come out much easier. And when I say way easier with the heat, way easier. So in this video, I've got a little surprise for you guys. And if you guys can see on the table here, I actually picked up some billet old Talon hubs for the 1999 split fire build. Now this was a Facebook KX250 group marketplace find. This cool dude Noah, he actually built a 1999 KX250 as well, went with a separate wheel set. And they also had the front and rear Talon brake discs as well as the sprocket here, which was a crazy find. So if we zoom in a little bit closer here, the front hub does have some rock chipping, which is pretty standard for a front wheel. The rear hub is actually in great condition. The only problem is, is that these are just really faded from being 20 plus years old. Long story short, I was able to contact the original designer and manufacturer of Talon hubs, which is Metrics Engineering out of the UK. They actually make their own brand of wheels now um, which are called NVMX UK wheels but the story behind Talon is that from 2002 to 2021 before Talon right when Talon sold these hubs were manufactured and designed by metrics engineering so I was able to get in contact with Mark the son of the owner Julian and Mark was speaking to his dad about these hubs and basically he was saying that these hubs were some of the original Talon designs that they made back in 2002. So just a really cool backstory behind these Talon hubs. I need to strip the anno and see if I can polish these up. So I'm gonna do that in another video, but I really was just too excited not to share these hubs with you guys. And then once I get these polished up and looking brand new again, I'm gonna send them out to W. W is gonna lace them up to black XL Takasagos along with their spokes. And they're gonna send them back to me. You guys know I'm normally one who does my own work like that but with the time constraints that I've put on myself and me being a full-time dad watching my son it's really hard to find time to get into the garage and lacing wheels is such a tedious process I actually love lacing wheels I've got a couple tutorials I'll link them on in my description below but I just don't have the time and patience right now to lace my own wheels. So I reached out to W, they're stepping up. They're gonna lace up these set of wheels for us, which is gonna be pretty sweet. It's gonna be real nice just to ship them out, have W do them and get them shipped back as a complete wheel set and not have to do the work. So I wanted to be honest with you guys, that's how I have to be efficient with my time right now. And I appreciate the guys at W for wanting to lace these wheels up for me. Okay guys, the next thing I wanted to talk about are these bump sticks here, as you see, I've got a couple sets on the table. If you guys watched my part one video, which most likely you did, you would have found out that I have a set of Pro Circuit Works kit forks here. They've got the Works internals with the blue caps. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do with the suspension, and this is where I need your help. I feel like I've got a lot of decision fatigue going on and I can't make a decision. So I'm asking you guys for your opinion, thoughts, and what you think I should do. I'm gonna share my opinion and what about what I think, about what I really want. And then I want you guys to let me know below in the comments what you think I should do for this build so you guys can have your input on what may end up on this build. So obviously Pro Circuit is gonna revalve and spring the kit suspension that I have here, but to step it up a notch, which I've never done, is I'm looking at in, I'm looking into getting coatings. There's, so there's the shock shaft and lower fork tube coatings, which I've got three options, so let's start and talk there. Um, the first option I had was kind of going with a newer style, modern Pro Circuit look. So obviously Pro Circuit uses the Kashima up top, and then they have the blue turquoise anodized lowers below, which looks really cool. Back in the day, Pro Circuit had the black DLC coatings on the bottom, which is the strongest anodizing that you can possibly get for the fork lowers. Um, but I'm just kind of used to black, and I've never had some cool colors on the lowers before, so that's why really I'm leaning the blue turquoise color um, to give this bike an old but still a new modern 
pro circuit look, or the decision is a gold anodized for the fork lowers, um, which also looks really cool. Here's a picture of my buddy Scotty's bike here in the UK. This is an Emic version. Um, the gold lowers look really cool. So I've got three choices for the lowers and I want you guys to help me out. The blue turquoise anodize, the gold anodize, or the black DLC lowers on both the fork lowers and the shock shaft. So what do you guys think I should do? Leave a comment below. My ideal situation would be to go with the blue turquoise to give it a modern look, but I don't know, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out what I wanna do. Now, in terms of the upper coatings, we've got Kashima or a hard anodize. With Kashima coating, Kashima coating can only be done in Japan, so I would need to disassemble the forks and send these out to Japan. But here's the dilemma. With the Pro Circuit kit forks, I don't have the proper tool to take the fork, the blue fork cap off. My buddy Scotty in the UK said he could send me one, but with the time constraints that I have, I'm not sure if I want to wait any longer. So what I might do is strip down the OEM forks, send out the OEM uppers off to Japan, get them Kashima coated, and then when I send out the kit forks to Pro Circuit to get their work done, I'll just have them reassemble the forks with the Kashima coated OEM forks. That's an option. Or another option is have the uppers hard anodized, a quote unquote faux shima look. With the Kashima, they do the inside and out. So you get the lower friction coating on the inside, which obviously lower friction, lower heat, the fork just operates better for longer. That's the idea with the Kashima on the inside. But if I just went the route of a faux shima hard anodized just on the outside, it wouldn't be on the inside. So I wouldn't see those benefits as a vet B, C rider, am I gonna really see the benefits of the low friction Kashima anyway? Probably not, let's just be real. <laughs> so let's just, I'm just gonna be real with myself and real with you guys. I'm probably not gonna see the benefits, but just knowing it, who knows? You look good, feel good, feel good, ride good type of thing. The benefits with the hard anodized on the outside is that I wouldn't have to send them to Japan. I could keep them here local in the United States and the hard anodized is said to actually withstand rock chips a lot better and hold up for a longer period of time. For the amount that I ride, it could matter, it could not matter. Having a Kashima coat would be really cool to say, oh, this bike has Kashima coat on it, but the hard anodized Foshima also looks just as good, lasts a little bit longer. So I don't know, is it a little bit of ego? It's me wanting to do the Kashima coat over the Foshima hard anodized. That's what I need help with. What do you guys think I should do? Should I go all out and go the Kashima coat or should I just do the Foshima hard anodize? Um, I'll have to reach out to a couple companies in the US here who do that, but that's my dilemma right now with the suspension. So maybe you guys can sway me one direction or another, but I need to make a decision probably within a week or two, um, especially if I'm gonna send out the forks to Japan. Finally, as you guys saw earlier in the video, I stripped the swing arm, subframe, and frame of all the bearings, etc., sent them to the sandblaster to remove all the paint and coatings, and I finally got them back. So the frame I sent to California to get those gussets welded on and the welds reinforced, that was a process to find a box to fit that frame. I didn't film it, which I should have. I had to actually fabricate my own box to fit it and ship it out. Anyway, true story. I'm really disappointed in the way the sandblasting turned out. Um, if you guys zoom in a little bit closer here, you can just see how rough the sandblasting actually is. I'm not really sure what type of media um, this company used, but he basically sandblasted these, these parts with bricks, it seems like, and it's just super rough, really rough finish. I was not expecting it to be like that. Um, and they're an industrial powder coating company. So maybe that's just what they normally use on their industrial type stuff. Um, but I think for motorcycles, it is just way too rough. And if they were to go powder coat over this, I feel like the roughness of the sandblasting from that left was left on the surface would show through. 
What I'm also really disappointed about was that they didn't plug up any of the joints in the swing arm frame or subframe where the bolts go through, the axles go through, the bearings go through. So especially with the swing arm here, I really hope that I don't have an issue getting these bearings in. What I'm gonna do is take the prime wheels to the inside of the swing arm and see if I can smooth that back out, but I am <laughs> Really disappointed to say the least. My idea was to save some time on this, honestly, um, and not necessarily cut corners, but save time. I was like, oh, I'll have them sandblast, strip the paint off, and then when I get back, I'll just hit it with the rough and fine prime wheels to clean these up. But getting them back, they are way too rough. So the process of getting these cleaned back up, like you see here, I've started with the green 80 grit prime flap wheel, just to kind of break the roughness of, the, of the, these parts here. Then I'm gonna throw the 180 grit flap wheel, and then finally the 320, and then finish up with the coarse single wheel, and then the fine single wheel. I thought I would save time by doing this, but in reality, I probably could have just stripped it myself a lot quicker than it would have been to clean up the rough finish that the sandblasting did. So uh, you live and you learn, you make some decisions that you think are gonna be good for yourself and they're just not, they actually create more work for you. So I'll take it as a learning lesson as Ricky Carmichael would say in the Supercross broadcast, not a learning experience, a learning lesson. <laughs> Got a joke on Ricky Carmichael, I love the guy, but <laughs> had to throw that little jab at Ricky Carmichael for saying learning lesson. Daniel Blair says it too, but learning experience, if it's, is it learning lesson or learning experience? Leave a comment below. I think it's learning experience, not learning lesson. But I'm gonna take this as a learning lesson, so it didn't quite work out the way I thought, but not a problem. I should have just stuck with my old classic routine of trying to finish these up. With the prime wheels, I paid 100 bucks to get all this stuff sandblasted and I'm gonna spend just as much or more time on getting these back to look fresh, smooth, and like that brushed aluminum look that we all love and know. So yeah, that, that's the jam with that. But for this video, we're not doing anything with the motor. I decided I'm gonna have its own video for a complete teardown. But if you guys have other two strokes, I've got other engine teardown videos up on my channel for an RM250, YZ250, 05 to 07 KX250, as well as CR250. But if you don't love working on motors and you've never done it, we're gonna dive into this and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. And then when I finally do get the motor stripped down, Obviously the motor is pretty dingy. Vapor blasting is really the way to go to get this motor looking brand new again. So my buddy Tyler Winstead at Motor Resurgence. If you guys are not familiar with Tyler, here is his Jeremy McGrath YZ250 build. The amount of unobtainium parts on this bike is just insane and is honestly what inspired me to do something similar with this 1999 KX250. So he has a vapor blasting and zinc plating service. Unfortunately, I don't have my vapor blast to do it myself anymore so awesome that he is going to be on board with this project i'm going to be sending the cases as some of my brakes and other aluminum parts on the bike to get freshened up and vapor blasted so um, i'm going to update you guys on how the swing arm and subframe turn out after i'm done using the prime wheels on them that's just going to take way too long for me and i wanted to get a video guys a new video out for you guys with an update on the entire project so stay tuned for upcoming videos on how well those things come out but don't forget as well, guys, this channel is supported by the folks at Rocky Mountain ATVMC. I've got a link in my description below. So if you guys click on that link first and shop for parts, I'll get a small slice of that. Um, it's no different experience on your end. It's a way for you guys to directly support me and this channel for free. So as always, I see you guys doing it. Thank you guys so much. And if you want more content on this 1999 KX250 split fire project, don't forget to head over to David Pingree's Whiskey Throttle Media channel and catch the highlight videos if you guys want more of a shorter version of these videos or you just can't get enough of the 1999 KX250, I get it. I can't get enough either. Head over to his channel. I appreciate them for having me along on the journey. But we're wrapping it up. As always guys, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.